So hold this example that I just did in your head um, for in the future. So I, what I didn't want to do is give you the definitions of groups and then start slamming you with these weird examples that I'm going to hit, hit you with. I wanted to show you the examples first, get your feet in the water, and then slam you with everything at once. <laughs> So another example that you might not have seen before, it's one of my favorite things to uh, teach in a Math 103 class, like a Math for Poets class. It's, these are objects called two-string braids or n-string braids. You can imagine n of these strings hanging there. And what they look like is um, you can imagine strings hanging from a rod like shower curtain rings and how they're, they're just hanging down. But the only caveat is they're also hooked at the bottom by some hooks as well. So you have two strings coming down. And in this example that I've drawn here, you have one string crossing over the other string on the bottom. So that's an example of a two-string braid. Here's another example of a two-string braid. Just two strings hanging down from two shower curtain clips, but also clipped at the bottom. Or here's another two set of examples. You could have that um, the crossover went this way. Or you could have that it crossed over more than once. It could have crossed over, I think here, here we have one, two, three crossovers. So you could have all kinds of different configurations of these two strings. So this is these are two string braids. There's also something called N string braids. You could have three strings, you could have five strings, a thousand strings. So um, they're objects. And I'm just going to start to blow your mind. So this is something different. Abstract algebra is actually a study of geometry in some way. And um, when it's traditionally taught, you start off with these examples where they're not geometry, unless you use Galleon's book. In Galleon's book, he does try to bring in dihedral groups and some idea of geometry. But they're actually actions. Then we talk about group actions. So. Um, that's why I wanted to bring in braid groups because I don't think any of you have probably seen it before and it is really, really cool and it's very, very different from anything you've probably seen or can think of seeing. So that's kind of how you have to think about abstract algebra. You have to have an example in your mind of something that you're not used to so that you can think about the base group structure or whatever they're trying to impose upon the set that they're imposing upon. So this is a beautiful example that you we're gonna keep using throughout the semester. So again, one crossing, no crossings. There's another one crossing, and there's three crossings. So it's different kinds of uh, two-string braids that, uh, as an example. Hold that example also in your heads. Hold your hands in your heads. <laughs> not yet, but it, it will come, right? No, this is not complex analysis. It's not that bad. 